Amen. How many of you have left a promise that you can take to the bank? Yeah. Amen. You can never leave you nor forsake. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. We will supply all of our needs according to his riches and yes, glory. Will. All right. All right. We're up to the sermon. Shall we turn our Bibles to the book of Judges? Judges chapter 11. Beginning at verse 1. Hear the word. Now Jephthah the Gileadite was a mighty man of valor, mm -hmm. and he was the son of a prostitute. And Gilead begat Jephthah, and Gilead's wife bare him sons, and his wife's sons grew up. And they thrust out, kicked out Jephthah, and said unto him, Thou shalt not inherit our father's house, for thou art the son of a strange woman. Well, then Jephthah fled from his brethren and dwelt in the land of Tob. And there were gathered vain men to Jephthah and went out with him. Mm -hmm. And it came to pass in the process of time that the children of Adam, the Ammonites, made war against Israel. And it was so that when the children of Adam made war against Israel, the elders of Gilead went to fetch Jephthah out of the land of Tob. Well, and they said unto Jephthah, Come and be our captain that we may fight that we may fight with the children of Ammon. And Jephthah said unto the elders of Gilead, Did not ye hate me? Kick me out of my father's house. Why are you coming unto me now when you are in trouble? Well, and the elders of Gilead said unto Jephthah, Therefore we turn again to thee now that thou mayest go with us and fight against the children of Ammon and be our head over all the inhabitants of Gilead. And Jephthah said unto them, Elders of Gilead, if ye bring me home again to fight against the children of Adam, the Ammonites, and the Lord delivered them before me, shall I be your head? And the elders of Gilead said unto Jephthah, The Lord be witness between us if we do not do so according to thy word. Yeah. Then Jephthah went with the elders of Gilead, and the people made him head and captain over them. And Jephthah uttered all his words before the Lord in this time. Shall we? Consecrate me now to thy service, Lord, by thy power of grace divine. And let my soul look up with the steadfast hope and my will be lost in thine. That thou wilt draw me nearer, draw me nearer, blessed Lord, to the cross where thou hast died. Draw me nearer, nearer, blessed Lord, to thy precious leading side. To the end, O oh God, that you are glorified, Christ magnified, the church edified. Not unto us, Father, Father, but all unto you, Father. Yeah. Father, may, we, may I be priest that you might be priest, Lord, higher and higher across the Calvary, that they might not see me, but the resurrect the hope of Christ, in which we live, who we have our being in. To the end, someone might come running out like the Philippians, jail on his path. What must I do, we say? In Jesus' name, amen. 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 I want to say thank you to all those who traveled with us to Greater Love on Friday. Thanks to the ensemble of the males course. You all did good on Friday. Good job, y'all. We thank everybody who came. All right. Our sermon title this morning is Family Matters. Family Matters. Amen. Matters. Amen. Matters. Family Amen. Matters. Amen. A movie that I like, but I like it much better on Broadway, is Dream Girls. Dream Girls follows the life of a group of women from the south side of Chicago who made themselves a singing group. It was really a uh, amalgamation of the girl groups of the 1960s, the Supremes, the Marvelettes, and, and all of those types of groups. It was a great movie. It was an even greater play than Broadway. Uh, scene number eight in the movie, scene number eight, we encounter Cece. Cece is the brother of Effie White. Effie White is the one who's the lead singer in, in Dream Girls, and, and Cece is trying to get Effie White to take a step back so that the other girl could become the face of the group. Cece prefaces this by saying that we are a family. And then he began to sing an entire song in regards to them being a family and them working together and them having dreams and being able to accomplish those dreams together. It's in scene number eight that we encounter that they are a family. Mm -hmm. 
But for it seems like in scene number 12, we encounter those same people who said we are a family, we are strong as a mighty tree. The same folks who say we are a family were the same folks who said, F it, get out. For it seems like we encounter the shift in the relationship between CC and his sister, between Effie and the dream girls. Family is an interesting thing. Family is the first thing God created. Amen. Amen. Before God created the church, there was family. Amen. Before the law came into existence, there was family. Yes, Before the covenant given to Abraham, there was family. Yes. It was in the book of Genesis around chapter 3. It said, God created man and woman in his image. And what did he do? He told them to be fruitful and multiply. Family. Family is important. Family is what we have to lead on. Family is who we all are. We are a family. That's why it's so important, apropos, that the great songs of the 19th century talks about being a family. We are family. Yeah. Listen, I got all my sisters in me. Yeah. We are family. Family is important. Family values. Uh, shows from the 1980s. Family ties. Good times. All of these are shows about family. Today in our text, we encounter a family. A family that has some dysfunction. A family that messes it up. A family that doesn't always get it right. But guess what? They're still family. Yeah. In this text, we encounter a man by the name of Jephthah. Jephthah becomes one of the judges of Israel before Israel gets the king. Mm -hmm. Jephthah was the son of a strange woman, the text says. In another text, it says she was a prostitute. Jephthah, the son of Gilead. Gilead being one of the descendants of uh, uh, Manasseh. Manasseh being one of the sons of who? Joseph. Joseph being the son of who? Jacob. He is in the family. All right. First point I want to make is family is identity. Family is not always destiny. We encounter Jephthah. Jephthah family. Jephthah family are the ones who turn their backs on him. Jephthah is connected to these people by blood. He's not a strange man. He's a man who sat with them. He's a man who blood runs in their face. He's of a tribe of, of Israel, just like they're from a tribe of Israel. He is in the family. Family is identity. Family identifies who we are. I remember watching, and me and my grandmother watched it often. We watched Red Fox, Sample, and Summer. Love to watch it, love to laugh, love to slap their comedy, but it is it, when Rollo shows up. When Rollo shows up, Red Fox says, Ain't you read the book? He identified Rollo by who Rollo was. He was in Rita's family. And we have to understand our family is our identity. Family is going to tell us who we are, family is going to tell people about where we came from, family is going to tell people about what. Some of us were born in a family and the family was not the best, but guess what? That does not define who you are. God will put his mark on you. God will tell you who you are. God will know you. God will make you. God will lift you up. Don't let family hold you down as destiny when family is just identity. Somebody in here has had an issue with family because they think that their family is the end all be all to who they are. Don't let what your father did hold you in mind. Don't let your mother say keep you held back. But you walk in the newness of life and say, while they are my mother, while that is my brother, while that is my sister, they don't define who I am. Yeah. My identity is not wrapped up in my destiny and I'm so blessed that my family can't determine. Yeah. Yeah. Jephthah refused to let his identity And when they kicked him out the house, yeah. his brothers got the same blood running in their thing. His brothers kicked him out the house. Father didn't say nothing. He went out into the wilderness, and there he found himself a group of men, and they became valiant men. I tell you what, don't let family hold you down. Amen. Family is our identity. Family is not just the second point I want to make here. Family is inspired. Family is not always desired. Family is inspired. Family is not always desired. 
God created man. And God created you and your family on, a, on purpose with a purpose. Family is inspired. God placed you there for a reason. Maybe you being placed there meant that you were supposed to be the salvation that came to your family. Maybe you being placed there meant that you were going to break generational curses in your family. Maybe you being placed there meant you were going to be the first college student in your family. Maybe you being placed there meant you were going to be the first doctor in your family. Maybe you being placed there meant you were going to be something greater than your family could have ever thought. God placed you in your family on purpose. That's right. Family is inspired, but guess what? is not always designed. It's the same folk who is who God placed them among the same folk that turned their back on him. You remember the very first murder that occurred in this world it was not some folks hanging down on the 140th reunion at a gas station. It was not the folks riding a bike down the street. It was not some man running from the police and being chased and being shot. And like, no, that's not the first murder. The first murder that occurred in this, according to the sacred text, happened between two brothers. Amen. Cain and Abel, because one brother was jealous of the other brother. I tell you, family is the problem. Family is not always the problem. Just because we share the same blood don't mean we the same king. Just because me and the family got, don't need you always like me. I don't know why too, but I got some folks in my family who I don't like, and there's some folks in my family that don't like me. Well, yeah. 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 Family is inspired. Family is not always designed. It is family sometimes that will cut you before you're free. It's family sometimes that will stab you in your back before you hear. Family is about to give up. God placed you in that family. Understand that you might not desire to be there. While your desire might not be to be there, understand that there's a purpose on purpose for you in that family, and you just fulfill the purpose. See God for your purpose oftentimes. Growing up in my family, I was the only boy that lived in my house, and I prayed earnestly, Lord Jesus. <laughs> Deliver me from this man. <laughs> you laugh, I'm serious. Because I did, I did not like it, I could not stand it. You all see the relationship between me and my grandmama today. My grandmama did like me when I was a child. It's the truth. She hates it when I say it, but it's the truth. And while that is my family, and while that is my family, I have not always felt desire in my family, and maybe I'm the only one who felt like an outcast, felt like a black sheep, felt like I was by myself, but I stopped by the day. I'm so glad that I got a family in yeah. God. Yeah. Yeah. And Chester in this case, encounter his family who God sent him to, but who did not go him? Somebody here. It's not like in your family just because you got a different dad. Somebody here don't like somebody in their family because they had they made a way out of nowhere and you did not. Somebody here is not liking their family for some petty reason, but I stopped by the test. Just like Jephthah in this text, while family is his spot, family is not always the time. You just keep doing what God told you to do. When you decide that you're going to make a change, especially if you're in a family that has spent years in, in the depravity and years in poverty, and you decide that that's not the route I want to go, you decide that I'm going to do better in school, you decide I'm going to go to college, and when you come back, they look at you like you're crazy because you decided that you were going to do something with your life. Yeah. Yeah. Their own insecurities began to sprout up. They think they better than somebody. I'm not better, baby. I'm just different. Understand that it's not about me being better. I just chose a different path. It's not about me being arrogant. I just chose for a different way. And a different way does not mean I'm better than you. It just means I'm different than you. And understand that different is not sufficient. These people have a strange codependency upon 
this brother named Jack. The Coda case is literally when you are always the one who is in need. You, I, codependent, that person needs, is needed by everybody else. And then when they're needed by everybody else, they then be, 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 uh, build up a dependency on being needed. Well, this, is come, this comes out of one of my favorite movies, again, another family movie, Soul Food. Yeah. Yeah. In Soul Food, we encounter three children, Terry, Maxine, and Bird, also known as Robert. And Big Mama is the matriarch of the family. There's a strange codependency on Terry for everything. Terry is the one who went out and became a lawyer. Terry is the one who saved her money. Terry is the one who decided to do things differently in the family. Terry, and it's at the earliest scene of the movie, where we encounter Terry saying, you all think that I'm an ATM. That's automatically Terry's money. And somebody here has a strange codependency in your family, and everybody wants to call on you because they know that they can depend on you, and you have to break that curse. Codependency will destroy you and destroy your family. I got a family of my own. Just to have a family of his own. Yeah. Just to have to take care of his own wife and children. I can't keep taking care of you, dad. I can't keep taking care of you, brother. I got to take care of the folks God put me on. Amen. Family is inspired. Family is not always desired. The last point is family is institutional. Does not have to be destitution. Family is an institute. Amen. God established, God breathed. It's an institute. And being an institute is a foundation for which we build upon. A family is an institute. We all in this together. I don't want you to leave the sermon thinking I'm saying turn your back on your family. I'm not, I'm not saying turn your back on your family. I'm saying put some boundaries in place with you and your family. Some family need boundaries because some families will always be drawn from you and never have anything to bring to the table. And you need to know what is what and you need to be able to set some boundaries. Jephthah yeah, said, y'all kicked me out. I was nobody. I was a bastard child. I was a no, no good. You didn't think I was anybody. And now you need me. Come on. Yeah. You know, we got family members who do us like that. They don't want to talk to us until they need us. Amen. They don't know our phone number until they need a cash. Right. Listen, I can't keep taking care of you and yours. I got to take care of me and mine too. Family is an institution. While it's an institution, it doesn't mean I have to go broke trying to take, take care of you and yours and I'm trying to take care of me and mine. It does not mean I have to keep going in my pocket and keep using the resources that God has given me to give you. At some point, brother, you got to grow up. And chapter is clear in this text. Y'all did not want me, and now you want me back because you're in me, and you got to be careful of folks like that in your family. Yes, yes. Yes. Listen, you can help them sometimes, but at some point that help becomes enabling, and that enabling is then funding their, uh, their issues. That's why we have to be mindful and that be mindful that while family is institutional, we don't have to go broke trying to deal with our family. We don't have to pay that light bill and our light bill too. We can stand up to my, and here is chapter say, I'm going to put some boundaries in place. Because the way you hurt me before, you can't keep hurting me like this. You can't keep putting me out when you don't like it. You can't keep turning your back on because you don't like what I said. I am your family, and if I am your family, treat me like your family. That's it. Family is institution. That don't mean I got to go broke.
But let me send you to the source who got the money. I may not always have the words to help you, but let me send you to the man who has the words of life. I might not always have the resources to help, but the source is the Lord our God. Is there anybody here who knows this type of God? When family turns their back on you, when family lets you down, when family turns you down, there is a God who will be your mother, a God who will be your father, a God who will be your brother, a God who will be your son. Thank you. 